anyone want to see the back of my uh, monitor? <laughs> Yeah, Nisha, I wasn't quite sure if you had a stream deck and that was like a different camera angle you had set up. I don't have a stand. This is like right behind the monitor. <laughs> I see that. It's cool. You can tell from there that the cable is well plugged. Well, your monitor wouldn't work otherwise. This is true. The cable's in good state. It's not peeled off. I guess everyone's looking at, at the document. Spend more time doing that. Do any of you know if Jonathan is planning to join? Yeah, uh, I just print him in internal chat and say, I, I'm not sure if he's at PC. So he seems like a way, but I also ping him in the signal. So let's see. Okay, cool. While we wait, how's everyone feeling in, regard, in regards to where we're at, where we've come so far? If not, maybe since you're adjusting the microphone. Yeah, so sorry. Yeah, I didn't have a chance to go through recently all the documents, but um, we still have some areas which need to, which need some more content regarding this. Oh, okay, sorry. I think it's, we have more content. Maybe I need to read the, read the recent document. I, I'm not in a good state to come in now. So. That's all right. We'll just continue going through the list. Alex, how are you? I'm all right. How's everybody else? I want to um, so I think the the first thing uh, that I would point to is um, we have sort of a, a uh, philosophical discussion about the executive summary and whether or not it should be in bullet list form or paragraph form. Um, so if we have feelings about that and, and come to a decision, um, basically all of those changes can either be accepted or rejected depending on which way we want to go with that. Which of the two are you inclined towards? What's your position to start off? Um, I, um, I think that I don't know. I, I don't have a strong feeling on this. Um, I think that um, it's probably easier to read in a bullet form um, for someone who's interested in scanning this to get a summary of, of what the paper is about. Um, but it is, um, but I don't know. I don't, I don't have strong opinions on this. I'm, I'm um, just sort of relaying the state of the, of the field, I guess. Gotcha. Yep. Perhaps the, the, there's the middle ground, a hybrid of the two. 
some paragraphs and and some bullet points but just enough of both and not too much of either who else has opinions on this michael marina so, yeah. face off go yeah so uh, i think we should decide that if we are writing it for c level or executives in general that uh, people at um, c level or director level then I should, uh, I think we should use more of a paragraph approach, right? A short executive summary, which basically tells the problems that we are trying to address and basically just say, okay, if you read this paper, you will have some information about it because it, it, it basically the focus should be on what problem we are trying to address. And then we kind of say, okay, if you're more interested, go ahead, read the paper, right? If our audience is more technical in nature, like an administrator, like um, uh, like some sort of, um, I mean, I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? There, there is a second tier, right? That that is more technical in nature. If we are trying to address them, uh, then we can. Uh, I, I'm in favor of including bullet points. Uh, th this is my uh, past experience, but but yeah, th this is my observation. We we have to target the audience and then focus on uh, either the problem for executives, and then solution kind of thing for uh, uh, for the middle tier. If if the intent for the paper is to to focus on middle tier, right? Yeah, fair points. I'm um, I'm gonna spitball here, but. I, I presume people who come across the document on their own, either because they were Googling about cloud native security or they follow the authors online or they follow cloud native foundation, perhaps they're going to be somewhat technical. I'm trying to think how would this arrive at the hands or like the eyes for, for that matter of, of an executive or the C-level suite? Would that be through someone in the organization passing it on to them as a package, part of like the approval of something? Or would this folks also possibly arrive at, at the document on their own? Presumably it's gonna be more of like, we have a bunch of different roles represented on, on the group that's produced this, more like our peers in other places. Don't know. Michael. Yeah, I agree. I think that the the target of the rest of the document seems to mostly be kind of engineers or people who would be um, making like making the technical decisions. Um, so maybe something. So I actually think that bullets would be okay, just to kind of give a really quick summary where you can skim through, see the parts that matter to you. But I could see the argument for paragraphs as well. I don't have a strong preference, but I do like the idea of bullets as a summary. Um, yeah, my, my two cents on it is just, uh, I don't want to say it's like completely bike shedding, but I think like, I, I feel like uh, regardless, if somebody's going to be reading it, um, if generally the content in the summary is at that sort of uh, the level we want it. I don't think it necessarily really matters. Okay, if anything's more than the substance. So right now, are the bullet points a suggestion to be added or a suggestion to to be removed? Looks like to so, be added. No, right now the, so it was originally written in bullet point form uh, and then, um, and. I think that the two people who who I think have the strongest feelings about this are, are both not on the call, but um, but Emily created a suggested version of it that incorporates all that same material into uh, paragraph form and then her suggested um, deletion of the of the bullets. Um, so everything is still there in both forms. Um, and if we can just decide which way we want to go and, and clear out all the suggestions with regardless of which direction. If, if we have both as it, it will be a dupli duplicate. Okay. Yeah, I think that um, Emily's suggestions in the paragraphs are essentially um, rephrasing and duplicating what's in the bullet points. Um, it's in a slightly shorter form. Um, there may be slightly more uh, 
I don't know, the, the bullet points may spell things out a little bit more, um, but it's, uh, it, yeah, it, it, they're, pretty, they're pretty much duplicative of each other. Okay. Yeah, my, my usual problem with anything written is that there's typically just too many words to it, it even if it's a white paper. I, I like the bullet points, uh, whichever, like you can, you can vote it, uh, feels like the team is inclining towards the bullet points. I wouldn't discard the other content. I would, I would put it into an abstract that links to this document or something or a little teaser. So, so maybe I'll put a, uh, I'll put a, a, a thread in Slack and we can all chime in and vote and then we can clear those suggestions out based on that. Sound good? Sounds perfect. Yep, thanks for bringing this one up. Uh, Michael, what's up? How are you? All right. Cool. Uh, where's your mind at regarding the paper? Um, it's, it's hard for me to really gauge. This is my first sort of white paper I've participated in. So, um, looking at it, you know, I think like, uh, last I read it, this was around, I guess, Sunday of, uh, around Sunday. I mean, largely, I think we have a lot of the content. Um, I think the things are mostly just like the things from my perspective, are just a handful of, you know, oh, this this content's still good, but maybe it belongs in a different spot. Um, that's really about it. But I think in general, the content seems uh, good. The um, general flow of it seems good. I just think that in certain cases, it can be a little, it's, uh, I found that it was a little confusing. And this is just more of a general thing, not any specific examples, but um like, hey, does it make sense to kind of provide this recommendation here or somewhere else? That was about it. Okay. So shuffling, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and feel free wherever you have an opinion to do that. Like, we, we still have time to do that. We're trying to almost get over the finish line, but like after that point and printing something out, or post editing, it's it's harder. So right now we still have time, and well, hopefully things are are meeting your expectations regarding like what you had in mind when when you came in at it. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, uh, I th I definitely think so, and I also think that there's a lot of stuff in here that I myself had never considered. That I'm like, oh, that's actually <laughs> good stuff I hadn't considered myself. Okay, gotcha. I have Marina next on my list. Marina, how are you? Um, I'm good. Yeah. Um, I have I didn't have a chance to go over the full document this past week, but I think that some of the sections near the end still have I think more comments and stuff and stuff near the beginning um, that you know at some point we should go through. But I think overall I think the content is mostly in place, um, as everyone else has said. It's just kind of a matter of making it flow correctly. Okay. Yeah, go with a fine tooth comb, perhaps makes complete sense. Uh, Emily made the suggestion of having three people uh, focus like their undivided attention on, on making sure of that flow and like a consistent narrative voice. Uh, if there are there are questions that are left behind or comments that are left behind, that's, that's also uh, a good opportunity like people taking that task to, to go through those. So if, if the team is a little bit blocked or unclear on how to answer something, uh, we can leave it for those folks to make a, a determination. If you have interest in, in taking up on that, uh, I'm to go at it. I don't want to like volunteer anyone to, to go for that, but thank you. Nisha? Yeah, so I uh, filled in Appendix 1 for containers. Um, I think um, Faisal is the only one that uh, gave feedback in that area. And I think uh, Mike Enzer also needs to give feedback and uh, um, Andy Martin as well, but I haven't heard from those folks. Uh, the 
content is more or less in place, probably need to make it flow uh, as usual. There may be some, there may be some um, pushback against some of the recommendations that I have in there. So I would encourage folks to take a look. Um, one more question I have about the document. Is there a way to refer to other areas in the document, um, like uh, internal links? Do we have that? We should have the ability to hyperlink sections. So let me go ahead and add a table of contents uh, in the meantime that can give us some of the hyperlinks and we, we reuse that throughout the document. The CMCF team doing the post edit would make sure that whatever format PDF or HTML that those links are followed, but they would need to know what we want linked. So yeah, thanks for bringing that up. On the appendix on containers, what kind of feedback are you looking for? Sorry about that. Um, the feedback. Uh, just in general, whether folks agree or disagree with the um, the recommendations, I, uh, over my experience with talking to folks about this, there are um, some uh, people who feel like it's going too far, or you know, uh, there are places where nobody. Uh, people say that this isn't an issue. So uh, one of the, rec for example, one of the recommendations I give is pull by digest only um, and, and don't rely on the tags. So that may rub some folks the wrong way. I, don't, uh, I mean, I'm not sure, but this is, this is to maintain build reproducibility and to be able to audit better. So, we, yeah. Uh, we want to spend like five, 10 minutes doing like a, a group uh, readout of, of this, or do we want to go on through the list? What do folks want to do? Does anyone feel strongly about this? Or we want Nisha to put it in the chat and we, we go back and, and revisit the section, make sure that, yeah, if, as you say, like you want a thumbs up from people or you want like perhaps other recommendations to be included, or perhaps if a recommendation is too strong, perhaps generalize it. Uh, maybe easier maybe the place with the most contention is the multi-stage Docker builds um, because there's uh, recommendations online that say to leverage multi-stage Docker builds. And I've said, if you're going to use multi-stage Docker builds, be careful uh, and propagate, um, you know, uh, environment variables, argu build arguments and uh, the uh, image digests that were used uh, at each of the intermediate stages. Totally. It also feels like there's room to talk about build packs in here. Oh, build packs. Uh, <laughs> now, the thing with build packs is that the, the build pipeline itself is managed by several um, suppliers, um, and each of those suppliers may be doing different types of auditing on their, you know, build pipeline and the final build packs uh, that they deliver. So that that is going to be a harder thing to give recommendations on. I would expect that the folks, the suppliers of the build packs would follow the uh, build worker recommendations um, yeah. previously listed in 
previously talked about in the white paper. Or, or perhaps less recommendation specific, but maybe the OCI image spec, like Dockerfile doesn't do everything that the OCI image spec recommends around security. And I think that's what gave birth to cloud native build packs. No, I. Uh, my understanding is that because uh, Dockerfile is a leaky abstraction, yeah. um, it is very difficult to um, update a Docker uh, a container image built out of a Docker file, or it's difficult to, you know, keep track of what exactly happened. Mm -hmm. And I think like the thing about build packs is that um, because of the build packs specification, it is easy to like rebase uh, or update the lower level dependencies if there happens to be um, an updated build pack. But again, yeah. the update, it, it requires that you trust the whole build pipeline, including all of the build pipelines that other suppliers are providing. Um, not sure what the auditing um, aspect of it is. Perhaps I can put some uh, information about it if one were to use that framework to create build packs. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe there's drawing a line of well, a a like entirely first party supply chain versus like having first, second, third party and having multi stage builds. Uh, yeah, it, it's very difficult for an end user to glean any information about the supply chain in any of these situations. So really, um, so it's especially hard for the cloud native build packs folks to provide that information as well. That said, they're making uh, improvements in the way they report these kinds of uh, metadata and uh, auditing the pipelines. So, I mean, that may change later. That's basically why I didn't put anything uh, anything about that in there because uh, it's kind of, it's in progress. Makes sense. Well, and in general, there's great technology, but it's so hard to operationalize and consume. And that's, that's a big thing of the paper, right? Like, are we meeting people where they're at? Like what can they make the most out of their existing infrastructure tooling versus steer them to use like new breakthrough technologies that are not quite fully like productionized or quite fully like made easy for large enterprises and people would not have a lot of technical jobs. Cool. I'll, I'll pause there. Let's put this one. Sorry, I muted myself. Nisha, let's put this one in the chat. And uh, yeah, great discussion. I think that that must have fostered listening thoughts from people come in and uh, I have a quick question to Nisha. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt there. Nisha, have you wrote that they generate an immutable less bomb of the code or uh, is it someone else? Sorry, I didn't understand. Can you repeat that? The the generate an immutable S bomb of the code section. Is that something you have ordered or is there someone else? Uh someone else had written that. Okay. But um yeah, um I think that's all it's fleshed out over there. They do mention S bomb. Uh, format Cyclone DX and SPDX. So yeah. um, specifically with regards to containers and S bombs, is there something you're looking for over there? No, uh, I mean, there, there was a recommendation in the end, like saying that, uh, uh, you know, SPDX 3MC include and everything like that. But from my understanding, XPDX is not available yet. So I, I don't know who exactly wrote or suggested that. So I don't know if we should include something which are not available now, or do, is that something you have added or is someone else, do you know that? 
I remember is, uh, putting that. I remember putting that in a comment. I don't think it's in the document. It is in the document. SPDS three aims to include all SPOM stakeholder using profile and everything. Yeah, there is a. Okay. Well, I I yeah. can remove it. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of recommending one hour or another, but uh, it's not really. Uh, I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong. Like, is SPDS three available now, or uh, do you know when it is going to be released or anything like that? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's not available now. Folks okay. are still working on it, and yeah. actually, I don't really know when it's going to be available. But yeah. um, that's a that's a good point that you know, we shouldn't really put something in the document that isn't available. So I can correct that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I will add comment. I just want to make sure that uh, I know the point. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, now see Cole and Magna on the call who I hadn't seen before, but going through the previous list of the ETF. How are you? What's going on? Oh, uh, pretty good. So I didn't get a lot of chance to look at the document as a whole. I was kind of skimming through it. I did leave a couple of comments now about some of the pipeline stuff, but I think they're minor things. Uh, and, and I think uh, Marina also mentioned that the end of the document still needs a little bit. Uh, it still has a bunch of things that need to be resolved, but I, I think we'll get to that. But yeah, I think overall, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the content makes sense. I did actually learn a fair bit as I was, you know, reading through some sections. So, yeah. You're too kind. Having two PhD students who are experts on the subject say that learning, you don't hear much of that from people in the industry. So, well, we're actually learning a lot from you guys. So, thanks for being here and contributing. Probably cool. happy to be here. Yeah, glad to have you. Cole? Um, yeah, I just, you know, I'm joining today. There, it's been a busy week for me, so I haven't had a chance to go through uh, the document again this week. Um, I should have some time uh, this weekend and then Monday and Tuesday uh, to, to go through and help out where I can. Weather's improving. I'd expect you to be wakeboarding on, on the lake. I'm used to time. To try to <laughs> yeah, per pretty soon man uh it's it's warming up we gotta get rid of this rain another 10 degrees and i'll be good nice nice magno hi yeah i'm just listening i need to go back to the document and and read through it again uh, it's been a while also i know that i had a, a few sections under my name so i'll just check if those someone uh had pick up those if not then i'll work on it this weekend Sweet. Cool. So just to gather and collect thoughts, Alex, thanks for opening up the vote on the Slack channel. If folks could chime in there, that would be really good. So we can get over that one and we know which way to go. Next up would be, well, let's try to go through outstanding documents we can do that i can share my screen and we can we can work through this bottom up or we can divide and conquer uh ahead of that if if you feel you have a particular inclination or feel very energized around tying this up start to finish if you like to do that it would be great to have you speak up or raise your hand be looking roughly for for three people could be more i see alex floyd marshall thank you, yeah. thank you. richard julian welcome uh, in whoa and hey hey guys um i'm uh i am curious do we want folks who are who have already contributed to be one of these three reviewers or should we get outsiders do we have outsiders is actually maybe the first question is there somebody we could rope into this are, are you thinking we could benefit from from someone who hasn't been close to it and is looking at it with fresh eyes? Yeah, I probably have blinders. 
Okay. I, mean, I, I not to say Alex. Alex is like I just volunteered Richard way to throw that in the trash. Um. Uh. Like I. 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 I'm good if it's us initially. I do think it would be good to have a, outsiders as well read it just to see. I mean, I. I think. I think actually, if we start today, just identifying three people, and I'll gladly stand up to be that one of those reviewers. I don't. I don't mind that at all, okay. and just read it from top to bottom, and and give some. Uh. Like make sure that it's sensible. I'm down for that, but I think we should in, in addition have people outside read it totally and we will cncf will will give their uh, editing team the paper and they are well, but e even before that what if we can get like just one external person to read it now give us a, a like really fast feedback so that we can see if there's something completely lost on alex me john whoever ends up being one of the full readers is that possible yeah, I, I have a couple of tech writers for different open source projects that might have the cycles today. <laughs> Let me do that. Yeah. If you have anyone else in mind, uh, feel free to also share with them. Yeah, I can. I can maybe rope. I, I I have a couple of folks. I could see if I could get put this on their weekend reading list. Okay, fantastic. Cool. Yeah, and, and like if you're taking this up, like really, really look for like that consistent like narrative like that one voice make sure that like expressions jargon tone etc marina i had heard from you some some things that made me think you'd want to take up and, and part of that i don't want to like throw you <laughs> at it but is it yeah i'd be happy to help out with that yeah if it's awesome and if there's any others uh do not feel any restraint. We don't need to cap this at three. Three is a good working number, but uh, feel free to reach out to these folks if, if you want to assist with that as well. Awesome. So we can check mark that one. Um, what else? Uh, let's go through. Are we, coming back? are we coming back to Appendix 1? We are. So first off, before before locking it to this three people, I think we're gonna need to push out the schedule for a week because there's there's plenty of comments. Uh, there's your appendix one, um, and there's some other things here and there that are not quite there. Like to to Michael's point and like reshuffling of things before like the team of three do their do their run through. Um, Let's see, one sec. Looking at, yeah, like the glossary needs help. Uh, we have all these different comments. Nisha, I'm not neglecting you. You are the first comment bottom up, and we'll we'll revisit this as part of as part of the discussion. But oh, that that's okay. I mean, I'm just wondering whether I should stay on the meeting or go off and continue to work on it. Perhaps I need to do that because some of the stuff is in uh, bullet points. Uh, like containers as build workers and uh, build scripts that use containers. Yeah. Um, you know what? Uh, how about I do that? Like uh, we can we can leave a, Appendix One and then I'll work on it some more, and maybe come back next week and take a look at it. Okay. Do you have Do you have any open questions for the team or? requests for assistance that will equip you better to work on this or or you feel pretty good on working about on it around it some more um so i would like the folks who created the build workers stuff to take a look at containers as build workers other than that i think i'm uh, pretty okay with it um my cancer expressed interest in looking at these recommendations um but yeah maybe maybe it'll maybe he'll get to it 
you know much much later so okay um, you know i i actually i uh, i should actually address uh, faisal's comment here so faisal asked whether we should uh, include example docker files that follow these uh what's the group's um feelings about that i think we can link the github file right in the appendix maybe something like that a hyperlink i don't think any uh open source github uh projects follow any of these recommendations <laughs> maybe yeah you, you can create yes yeah, sorry good yeah the problem with examples that i see is that if if we link it then we need to make sure that they are up to date and also people are just going to copy and and use it just like uh, on github at stack overflow so we're kind of responsible for that recommendation so i'm not sure if that would be a good idea no i, I was recommending more like a create a personal project in the, uh, we can't guarantee if they change something in the future right so maybe nisha you can have a example project or something like and they put that reference thing so you have a guarantee that you, you are not going to change anything right so was there wasn't there an effort vinod to do exactly that as part of this white paper to have something that we can point to as being like this this takes our white paper and applies the practices that we recommend is that it was i i do seem to recall i don't know if that effort got lost or if it's you know i i, I remember we talked about it at least initially yeah i don't recall if i i'm, I'm not sure it would be a great proof yeah. of concept i mean I remember reading a passing reference to something like that in one of the it's maybe in the introduction or something so so it was i think it was definitely in mind when the project was started but i don't i haven't heard anything about it since it's a great idea we can host it in the six security repo and make it like either companion references or something like that right the challenge is like we all want it, like we all think it's great the challenge is like getting someone to commit to do it and produce it and have someone else review it and doing well, it in yeah we have uh, we have like in uh, internal to the company we have examples um uh, and that's okay because you know we know where uh, we know what our pipeline looks like and we <laughs> we can be able to you know provide examples but if you were to do if you were to do uh, put something out there in the public i i don't really know how that information is going to be used or abused and i, I don't want to take responsibility for that <laughs> I I I had a a bent on this a couple of uh like actually when I first started getting involved here uh it it happened to correlate with a time where I I hadn't visited Flask in in like years and I wanted to see what the 2021 way of doing Flask development worked and I was like oh maybe I can use this it's just a simple cred app there's nothing special about it and I was like maybe I can use this to show off those pipeline pieces the actual software supply chain you know features that I don't get to work with all, all normally um you know i could i could just i could i could take off uh i'd used cookie cutter already is containerized the entire thing is is very straightforward it doesn't matter what the app does we don't even have to the functionality doesn't matter it's really are we doing the proper things of the pipeline that that you know the 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 cookie cutter comes with all unit testing um what i think would be adding would be the container specific you know security like uh signing the and then going through and like showing the different configurations for working in github and i i hate providing screenshots as documentation of that unfortunately when we're talking about project level things like this how else would you demonstrate it unless you give somebody access to the project which we're not going to do for everybody who reads the paper so and and maybe this is a secondary blog post or something that comes out later. I think that I don't think we should conflict that with the actual white paper. I don't think that's normal. Let's make it a stretch goal if anyone has sure. time like 
scrub, like sanitize something out and, and share it, be it a screenshot or an actual template, would be awesome. I'll try to get something. You're the man. Thank you. Nisha, how, how are you feeling? Do you have other open questions before we move further out? No, I think I'm good now. This is awesome, by the way. Thank you very much. Oh, thanks. Neat. So what are we adding here? Okay. So I'm going to drop. Thanks, everyone, for the conversation and support. Fantastic. And you know where to find us, if anything. I, I started a thread on, on the Slack channel and I tagged you on. So feel free to comment there if, if you could bounce ideas off with someone and or looking for very specific feedback. Thanks. All right. Take care, okay. everyone. See you later. Cool. Uh, Faiso, this seems like a formatting comment. I'll add that. Uh, I need some thinking. I don't know if it's a good use of everyone's time that I, I just go comment by comment, but maybe we all want to break out and do that. Like try to take five comments each at least that can be resolved. Some of them are, are going to be more than just clicking the checkbox, right? It might require some some actual editing. Can I resolve my comments? <laughs> Say that again. Um, no, can I resolve my comments? I mean, I will have to edit it, right? So, uh, yeah, so I, the one I was discussing with Nisha about SPDX, right? So I put it as a comment, maybe I will go and edit it instead of leaving it as a comment. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, yeah I think Nisha, I agree with that. So, yeah. Richard, would it be now that we not mentions SPDX, would it be good to like do that sample in SPDX format? Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's uh, I, I don't see a problem with that. And, and because you're going to you're, you're going to use that as a reference, right? Bernard, is that the, the whole idea? Um, can you re repeat that, Richard? Sorry. Uh, Sorry. With uh, your, uh, let me just make sure, Andres. I'm I'm getting your your request here. It, uh, we we do want to have an example with SPDX as the the actual like display format, so that we have something to refer to. Is that the question, Andres? No, no. Uh, so sorry. I think it's before we join. So uh, there was a line, a couple of lines that uh, referring about SPDS3, which is not ready yet. Like, uh, so wow. it is kind of recommending SPDS over Cyclone, saying that SPDS3 in future will have something like this. So I, I discussed with uh, Nisha and uh, she agreed that we can remove it because uh, it's not the current state of SPDX. So that's is, what I was is, saying. Is, yeah, that's so that's that more. gets to the question of like, do we recommend uh, you know, it's just like linking to a GitHub project at that point, if we specific, specify a particular version or tool to go with, because it dates us real fast, right? Yeah. Um, whereas the whole idea that we're trying to get across is to use the general concept. And then as of 2021 today, you know, SPDX3 is a good example of, you know, where you should strive to be. Is, is it fine to just get away with that? Are we copping out? Uh, not really, Richard. So SPDS okay. 3 as a standard is not released yet, and they, right. they don't have plans to release anytime soon. So I think that is a reason, like, um, you know, it's better to remove a particular line. It's just a recommending one over another, saying that future it, it might happen, but we are not sure it is going to happen in that in the future standard. So I think we shouldn't do that, right? Like, uh, unless it unless is not a published out standard. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll I agree with that. Right? that. Uh, Richard, to, to your question, yeah, that, that's what I was trying to hint at with Finod talking about SPDX and like thinking, well, what artifacts, if any, and what formats? It's one thing to show a, a sample config of a Docker file or a template of a Docker file, but an SPDX is more something you can actually export, share, publish. And we can do like, we don't need to like go 
like end to end a scenario for the, for the paper, but like maybe people don't know what an SPDX file is or like yeah. Uh, and it, it it might do we have any actual artifacts as part of this paper where it shows just even an idea there i don't, I don't see any in the document but i don't know if there are some referenced um where it's like this is what that s bomb looks like this is what you know it just just even even looking at the configuration settings i i mean yet again i don't want this to be screenshot documentation style but it does help to paint the picture a little bit about what you would expect to see so we have hyperlinked both uh, in SPDX and Cyclone in the footer, right? So, but you know those standards have both uh, optional and mandatory things, right, in the spec, right? So it is very difficult to, <laughs> you know, put one form or another. Like uh, that, that's my thought. Like maybe you know we just direct the reader to go and read the spec and understand what is in the no. spec. What is, uh, no. <laughs> maybe we no, can. I'm not clicking more. <laughs> Uh, I get it. No, no, uh, yeah, no. No, I think I think both is probably good, right? Uh, a, a, a representation of what the practical implementation looks like, and then also go read up on the spec and why this matters. Yeah, yeah, why we can. Both? Yeah, we, we can definitely link something like that. Yeah, but yeah, we need to. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and, and say, same on the discussion with Nisha. You know, like the the OCI spec like got together six years ago. And saw a number of deficiencies in like Docker images and in the runtime, and they proposed a, a better way of doing that that has been somewhat realized through build packs. But like, do we, and as things continue to evolve, like we want to people to know of the better ways, right? Or, or like the place we're trying to arrive. So, should we should we leave a conclusion of like hey keep an eye on the development of of these things that are still being advanced like watch out for spdx version three and well near term notary v2 i see question marks in people's faces it's like what's this guy talking Richard? No, sorry, I, I, I ended up, I, I, I got distracted by another, that was my question mark face. Uh, an, an email came across, I'm sorry, Andres. That's okay. Should, should we leave like forward looking statements of like, hey, keep your, keep your eye on this particular standard. There's a new ref on their way that is gonna add ability, no. My no. thoughts around that, right? Like we are betting on something we don't control and we can't guarantee, right? We, we don't know if a notary V2 will come out or SPDS3 will come out, right? Like I, I, they, they, there are risks related to that. I don't know if, if we should like, you know, come uh, something direct, somebody saying that watch out this, but you know, yeah. if there is some level of assurance, yes, I think we should definitely. But if we don't have that level of assurance that, uh, you know, something will come out, I think better not to direct people in that direction, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to sell roadmap, right? Because there's no guarantees, those things. Like there's so many factors that those projects may not get around certain things. Like let's hope not, but maybe say that, well, there are, there are like active improvements to like, just like state of the art or like state of the art for software supply chain is evolving. No, I think it's fine to put in more for, I mean, I think we, we are already mentioning a lot of current projects and, and standards like, um, you know, in Toto and, and notary and, and, um, and TUF and, uh, you know, we're, you know, those things are going to change too, as the paper evolves and as, or as time goes by. Um, so I don't know, I, I think it's fine to, um, uh, I mean, if anything, I think if, uh, you know, if we're saying we're looking for, you know, keep an eye out for this project to come out with this new feature set of features. Um, if anything, that may provide a little extra push behind some of those projects, I would think. Yeah, totally. 
One thing, uh, one thing I'm particularly energized about that I don't feel that I can actually write about it because I don't know if any implementation for it, but is is the use of secure enclaves or virtual secure enclaves. So sign and keys never leave the machine and do like multi secure computation of things and have like any signature threshold you want that and like the different building blocks exist like you have T TEs, you have BSE uh, that you could you could do those things tied to runners, but I just don't know something to reference for it. So things will converge over time, but not quite there yet. And also, we need to consider that you know different kind of like I mean, if, if you guys notice the recent six store, right? Like they have an approach without even focusing on the long-lived private keys, right? Like they just use a short-lived tokens and they signing stuff and they binding the signature to an identity of a developer or something like that. So, you know, th there can be different methods and different ways to do the stuff. Like, um, yeah. Totally. Yeah, and, and like with six store, I think you could like really enhance that with multi-party computation. And like no one, no one really has the keys because like what six stores place in trust is like proof of you having your email. And, yeah. and hopefully they built like and often through Google off that you can have MFA. But if someone has your email, I'm like, well, it's a public ledger, so if there's a compromise, it's going to be pretty obvious. And there's like a point in time, but you want to you want to avoid getting to the compromise in the first place, rather than saying, "Oh, it's it's all transparent. We know when it happens." Cool. So I'm rambling. Uh, we have five minutes to go. I will I will push out the schedule for a week. Uh, though while we haven't kicked off the like. Richard, Alex, Marina going end, end to end, start familiarizing with like the bulk of the content as you might have be peeking into particular sections. I, as I said, I will try to get some tech writers who haven't seen this before. Uh, Richard, if, if you could like reach out to your folks as well, that'd be awesome. Anything else before we go that anyone has? Yeah, so I have a thought uh, on uh, restricting the editing capability at this stage. Like, I think we shouldn't allow some random anonymous people to come and edit, right? Like, I think we are almost near to the completion phase. Maybe, I don't know, I think I should also discuss with John because I think he's the author of the document, right? Like, currently, anyone with the link can edit, maybe we can restrict at this point uh, like on the working group members only. And if someone want to have a edit access, they can request for the edit access or something. I don't know. Or, you know, maybe we can leave the comment and other things as a, for everybody with the link, but just editing. It is very difficult to, you know, <laughs> track who actually edited stuff and to find out all the details, uh, or at least for me, I don't know Google Docs that well, so yeah. I don't know, you guys thought like... I try to say back to you what I think I understood. You're saying you would like to restrict access to the document just and to you think... participated on it so far. You wouldn't like other people coming in at this point and doing any editorial work? Yeah, so go so, ahead. So, uh... I'm not, I'm not, I, when I, talk about getting external folks to do this. I'm not saying they'd come in and, and, and uh, put comments in our Google doc. In fact, I would actually export a PDF and be like, Hey, read this and tell me, does it make sense to you? Are you offended? Like, give me your, your, you know, instant feedback. I'm not, I'm not, I don't want, it, it, we can't do editing by committee. Um, it is a public document now. Anybody, I could just pass the link to anybody and they can come in there and yeah. comment. But I mean, uh, no, I, th that's not, when I say have somebody external read it, it wouldn't be fig find the grammar issues. It'd be, does this have uh, you know, cohesive vision? Um, 
you know, I, I would want to do my initial review first too. I, I, I yeah. think I, I, if I see massive, you know, if I feel confused by it, clearly I'm not going to go and, and try to get somebody else to try to sift through it. But. Yeah. Yeah, th thanks. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I think I didn't explain what I want to say in clearly. Like uh, the current permission of the document, right? If anyone with the link can go and add themselves as an editor and edit in the document, right? Like uh, so that means uh, anyone can come and join. It make it very difficult to keep track of who, <laughs> who edited and uh, anonymous edit and things like. There are so many problems like that. But you know, I was just saying about that editing capability but we can still leave the comments and um, you know other options there are like uh, comments what are uh, comments and viewer for public right like anyone can come and comment it instead of editing the document right like uh, that that's what i was thinking like uh, should we restrict that or uh, should we just leave it like uh, as of now and so, you know so you're talking about google docs lack of audit capabilities or, or tracing who changed something and you feel there are particular sections of the text that you would like them to remain as they are and if someone changes them you would like to know who did that and why yeah i mean there, there can be even people just find this link randomly you know i mean they, they might be ex expecting that uh, this is the initial stage of the document and they may come and they add a whole bunch of things like a hunter page or something like that like a, that's what I was trying to avoid. Maybe we need to make sure that they, they will come through the Slack channels and meetings, or at least they will have some contests before going and jumping into editing, right? Like, uh, so I think that that's what I was trying to avoid, right? Like people last minute, you know, coming and editing a whole bunch of stuff, right? So, yeah. So I, I think it's I, a I don't know if... to, to make a copy, uh, but still the version control in there that's that exists we can roll back to to current state if we see changes introduced we, we don't like and there will be the history of who did it we we you can make the recommendation to jonathan i don't know if i have ownership of the doc to like change the sharing rights yeah i don't so and it's already late in the uk i doubt we're gonna grab him before monday though he might check slack so yeah, feel free to feel free to address that with him. I would I wouldn't tighten it too much. This is like an open collaborative knowledge production thing. But I hear what you're. Oh, Thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan you invoked him. Summoned. I'm sorry. We just summoned you. We were saying your name. <laughs> it, sometimes it works. What can I say? It's like uh, all you need to do is just shout into Zoom. I'm always there, day or night. So, so, John, we were talking about the, the permission of the document at this stage, right? Like, uh, I was proposing, should we leave it like uh, edit anyone with the access link at this point of this document? Because, you know, even someone might find this link somewhere in, <laughs> in online or in their chat, and they may be thinking that it might be the initial state of the document and come and add a whole bunch of things. Maybe we can... Uh, add all the working group members as a default editors, or if someone need a new editing power, we can invite paste, we can add them or and, and leave the comments and the view to public, right? So anyone can come and you know suggest something or things like that. That's what I was asking the you know working group members' opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any think, thoughts on that? I'm fine with that, but. How, how, how have people seen this uh, work in the, in the past at, at this particular stage? And as you, you've, when you were doing the, the other work, is that, you know, this yeah, around this point, did you get to do the same thing? That was pretty kept on the wrap. So like those who didn't know that the work was going on, didn't know where to find the, the link. Right. And I think. Right. Our our eco chamber of, of six security is, is the extent that that folks know about this. We haven't necessarily publicly advertised about it. I think the concern comes from uh, we suggested running it by final readers and getting their yep. their input. Uh, I think there's value in that. At the same time, uh, well, 
authors might want to protect like the integrity of their content and not have someone with no context or familiarity come and like scratch the text apart right or if yeah. they so like we want to have version control understand why they did it why is it what is it that they're suggesting but i think like to to vinod's point like we can just sit tell people hey if you're going to make edits don't make edits directly like leave comments leave suggestions or make a copy of the doc work off on that copy and then we can compare one to the other so there are workarounds richard am i am i voicing the defense correctly am i am i not misrepresenting no i think i think you nailed it i think that's 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 in line with what i was what i was imagining okay we not how do you feel so we it's fine if we leave it open and and make it very like direct anyone editing don't don't edit how about we change the contributing piece it's there's the contributing bold item Maybe we change the verbiage around that. Fair. And and we're over time, but uh, Jonathan, I can I can give you a run through of what we did over the last hour. There there are a few outstanding sections uh, that still require work. Uh, it deems pushing out the schedule a week particularly the appendix on containers, glossaries, and complete uh, content needs to be shuffled around. We did get three people uh, to sign up, Marina, uh, Richard, and Alex, to give it the start through finish comp and like give it a consistent voice. I'm sorry, it's just turned on me. We're an hour late, aren't we? Sorry. I was the, wondering the, if daylight savings got you on this one, John. The the light bulb moment has just gone off. Sorry, we're late. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a good meeting? <laughs> we had an excellent meeting. And we, excellent. Time space is always eventually consistent across dimensions. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. Apologies for that. Uh, that's a little unfortunate. Well, the good news is I've got another hour uh, with a couple of the, the team to continue on, I guess. I'm sorry. Uh, and and so, so let, let me let me change the contribution thing. So that's fair enough. Um, but how did you get on over the last hour? I'll, I'll let other folks speak to it. Right. Alex. We uh I think we, I think we've we've done well. Um, uh, I started a poll in the Slack channel on uh, whether to go bullet points or paragraphs for the executive summary. Um, so feel free to chime in there, and uh, and that will resolve basically all of those suggestions and comments in the executive summary in one fell swoop once we make a decision on that. Um, but yeah. There's still there's still quite a lot of comments in the in the doc. Um, one of the things we were going to do is go th or I was going to do is go through uh, from sort of midway down and start uh, start finishing them off or accepting rejecting, kind of on mass. That's right, and uh, we're we're each going to try to tackle a few of those, ideally five each, uh, to divide and conquer and like don't leave it all on you or on yep. me that uh, some of those comments require more than check or, or X. Yeah. So, yeah. Mileage may vary. Yeah. I think there was a couple where uh, last week we were talking about uh, actually adding data to the appendix. And one of the things that we'd suggested was, look, there's a fairly significant chunk of additional content you want to write. Okay let's sort of update that document appropriately but if you want to take it and, and add that that a massive additional content take it to an appendix and if you get that in time great if you don't then 
you know, it's perhaps for an additional version or a reference to, a, to a, an external document so that you don't end up, um, you know, rewriting half the document right in the middle of it at this point. Yeah, one, one other thing that came up is we had talked initially about providing resources and references to config files and manifests along with uh, appendix one that is in containers it talks about docker files we had a discussion of whether build packs should fit in there there's some some contention around well how how reproductive how how effectively can you achieve reproductible results across multi-stage builds with either of these things uh there's that part but then the other part is should we be providing a docker file here or should we be providing an spdx file to show what an actual bomb is and provide provide like the look and feel for it uh right. Rick said he's going to try to do that best effort uh it is a, a stretch assignment we could we could create a repo under cncf slash six security for yeah. like companion material to the white paper uh but yeah we did mark it as like hey uh we don't need to get to this uh like yeah. right away, but it'll be really nice to have yeah. so that's more fair like enough. a next material right fair enough um i was just reading also through emily's suggestions on the single voice narrative was that discussed about getting a couple of uh, volunteers to go through yeah have we and we've identified those volunteers or yes marina yeah. you want to talk about that yeah. i know you mentioned marina i'm sure is... yeah I, I volunteered to to be one yeah. of the the people yeah so. cool okay cool all right good Okay, cool. I guess you, it's already over time, right? So I'm going to go through the back, the back end of the document uh, and and probably reach out to a couple of the other guys as well and and usefully use the the rest of that hour and update calendars and such. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Overall, overall, everyone expressed uh, feeling content with the state of things. Like people are are happy, content and not content. Let me let me be be clear on the English is my second language full disclosure <laughs> I, I think I think we we have a huge amount of good detail in here it just needs it just needs a chunk of polishing I think and uh and, and editing um and uh I think I think we'll get there so yeah okay cool between reshuffling and yeah one or two passes uh yeah through and through we'll we'll get us there Yep. We got the substance, which you don't want a super fluffy white paper with, with zero technical substance to it. Yeah, exactly. All right, good. Well, this is the fastest meeting I've had all week. <laughs> awesome. Well, I hope the rest of your week goes as well. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Anything else we, we need to cover? It sounds like you already have. Nope. All right. Magno, cool. how do we how do we turn the the white paper into like a ultimate hacking championship as scenario? <laughs> I don't know. I, I I think yeah, we'll have to figure it out. I think we have some scenarios on on supply chain already that Andrew uh, wrote, but yeah, um, we can think about it so that we can promote that as well during the CPF. Cool. Awesome. Addy, and and from from your perspective, like how how does well how well does this stack rank against the academic paper? Does it meet? Is it like rigorous enough, or you think like this would totally fall flat from like peer review scrutiny in academia? Aditya or Marina? Oh, okay. I. Actually, don't know how it would how that would work at all. I think Marina is probably a better person to answer that. I'm kind of new to the whole academic scene too. Yeah, I think it's just a different format, really. Um, but I think that, like, content-wise, I think it would be it would be good. It's just the the structure and 
format and all those things that are different different styles. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Well, we would need to like repurpose to farewell that. Yeah, I think exactly. we need a lot a lot more reference to back up the the paper or the academia and stuff. But yeah. The yeah. content's Put good. In columns and have the little diagrams in the paragraphs. That's yeah. pretty cool getting the graphics in, right? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, totally. Yeah. All right. Cool. Catch up with you all next week, I guess, right? Uh, and, and perhaps some more in the chat. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. No sweat about it. Hope, hopefully the annoying part is not like the, the awkward social circle that I was doing. <laughs> No, it's all good. It's all good because we were uh, we were uh, quite a few of us were stuck in another call. Actually, it was uh, about similar sort of topics, so we we should should have an hour to focus on this. This is quite decent, and I think a couple of people have actually reached out to me to say again over the weekend they're going to be focusing on it, which is which is reasonable. So I, I think I think we've got a lot of good content in there. I, I do think it needs some pretty heavy editing. So um, we'll, we'll we'll definitely shoot through that. Um, so that's reasonable. Yeah, one thing I I had hope to to see more of it be incorporated is nascent and emerging technologies. But it seems the the consensus was like, well, let's talk about trial and proven and what's uh, either openly available or commercially available. Like we talk about like virtual secure enclaves and like using like multi-party computation for like signature thresholds. Uh, and all those things, like even like talk about SPDX v3, notary v2, but. We, we did discuss that, right? At, right at one of the early stages. And I think one of the things that we started to split out was, look, we, we, we can go into the future state, right? But then it gets into more of a, more of a debate and more of a, a sort of an awareness campaign about some of the new technologies that are coming online, where in, in, which, which we would be good to do. Right, and especially if we identify gaps in the, in the current infrastructure, but uh, I think one of the benefits of doing a paper like this is that look, there isn't anywhere else where it actually strings together that level of advice and guidance that gives you that real clear recommendation of what to do, just today, right? And I think that was you know a lot of a lot of us thought that look at least if we can focus on what we're trying to do today, or what's what's capable of being doing, just sort of on the edge, perhaps a little bit close to um, some new functionality, but not bleeding edge, then at least we have a, a artifact that someone can pick up and actually use. And then, you know, we, we do this and then perhaps we go on, you know, we want to do the architecture and implementation and such. But we also have the ability to, you know, reference this article with that, uh, right, you know, phase two of this could be fixing gap A, gap B, and do some really cool sort of research type capabilities. Yeah. So I think a lot of us are sort of, chomping at the bit to really go out and, and, and get some of the new cool technology uh, after completing this, 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 this document. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a slippery slope with like future areas as by nature, it's speculative, right? You're speculating right. about roadmaps and availabilities of things. Yeah. But maybe there's like an addendum I, I can try to take a stab at that saying, hey, at the time of this writing, there's there's proposals, right? There's RFCs. There's yeah. like the OCI spec that was written six years ago. And a lot of those capabilities haven't been realized or quite manifested, but these are the things to watch over time. Not an exclusive list. There yeah. are many more, but from our vantage point and CNCF, these are the, the projects that we track. I think that's reasonable, right? I mean, yeah, I think fair enough. As long as you know, we, we caveat that with at the moment and 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 dot dot dot, right? But I think that could be good to sort of seed some of those conversations. Right. Um, but I, I think that's definitely one that we we're going to start opening up a lot of debate about how we could put this stuff together. Yeah. 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 We.
we can then do the software supply chain 2030, the software <laughs> of the future. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're still going to be tackling this for a while, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. it's a good start. All right, excellent. Cool. All right. Well, uh, thanks. Thanks for chairing the call and uh, and going through it. I'll I'll watch the video and spend some time with uh, a couple of guys getting together, and we'll go through the rest of the doc today. Fantastic. Have All right, day. man. Thank you.